Behind the Shades. For example, if we were out and I saw you across the room, instead of leaving, like you, you might be someone who's shy. You know what I mean? Like you might be someone maybe. who's shy. Maybe, but you maybe. might be someone who's shy who's not going to come up, even though if we catch eyes. But you know what you could do from a place of self-love? You could walk over. T- I could walk over to you before the night ends and give you my card and say, hey, just in case you're single, you know, if you asked me out, I would say yes. I mean, how would it feel if somebody did that to you? I would feel great because women don't approach men. <laughs> right. This is what I'm right saying. <laughs> right. They don't. <laughs> I would feel great. Like, ladies, get a card. <laughs> <laughs> Approach men. Approach me. Like, you, you know, if you want to, if you want to go that route. But you're absolutely right. So continue. So, what are some of the ways that women can give signals to men saying that, hey, I am interested? Because you're right. Sometimes you make on- eye contact. Like, if I'm looking like looking at you, and you kind of turn your head away, I'm going to take that as she's not interested or she's spoken for, right? Right. Right. Well, a big thing is eye contact and smiling and flirting and just kind of wherever you go, you know, being kind to like showing love to everyone, whoever you're at the grocery store and you're just being friendly because when you show up with that energy, that magnetism, that is the energy that attracts a whole nother kind of man, right? But another thing, you could walk up to someone and say, wow, your girlfriend must be a really lucky girl. And that gives you an opportunity to say, I don't have a girlfriend. (laughs) You know, I'm single. Great. Fabulous. You know, it's just like little things like that. We put the ball in the man's court 100% of the time. And why not just kind of be coy and funny and step it up a little bit. If you actually are interested, because too many times, and listen, when I was younger, I would do it. I would be the one that would look away, you know, just because it was more out of insecurity. I would be the one that would look away. I would definitely not be the one that would walk up to you and be like, Hey, your girlfriend must be a really lucky girl, you know, to give someone that opportunity. You know, I didn't do anything of that. This is like a more mature Melissa. This is advanced. So from like beginner to intermediate, now she's like, hey, I'm going to go what I, I'm going to go get what I want. Yeah. Like you have to go, right? midlife is not a time to settle, right? It's the time a woman becomes the queen of herself. And a lot of the women I work with are either, you could be divorced, you could be single and divorced, you could be single. I mean, whatever it is, you know, something's not working and actually you don't have time to, you don't have time to like play around, right? We're not. When you're in midlife, you have to kind of be realistic. Okay, I'm 40, I'm 50. How many more years do I have here? When we're younger, we don't really think about it like that. We think we're going to be here forever and ever, and that's it. And then you get to 40 and 50, 60, you might be like, hmm, I really only have a good 30 left. What are you going to do with that 30? Do you think there's a point where, as you mentioned, where we should be having that type of conversation where it's like, hey, I'm approaching 40. I'm in my 40s. I'm approaching 50. What does the next 30 years of my life look like? Do I want a companion? Do I want to be married? Do I want a boyfriend? Do I want a girlfriend? Because I had that type of conversation Mm -hmm. in my late 20s. And I was trying to say, hey, I want this type of life. Let me pursue it. But as you mentioned, some people don't realize that until they're at the halfway point or just slightly over. So is it too late for them or do they still have the opportunity to say, Hey, I can write this ship. It is never too late. I don't care if you're 80. It's never too late. It's never too late. It's never too late for love. It's never too late to get what you desire. It's never too late to get over yourself. I mean, what keeps people stuck are the stories that are running in their heads. And a lot of times it's, shit that happened when they were eight years old, 10 years old, 15, you know, just the things that keep you stuck, that it's, we like to call it like your younger self, your inner child, your, 
shadow self. I mean, this is like real life stuff. It's not woo woo stuff. It's like real life stuff. And we all have it. I mean, I would say that on this planet, we have a lot of children running around in adult bodies, right? And you can tell by the way you act when things don't go your way, you know, or when someone breaks up with you or taking the, taking the dating process way too seriously. It's just a date. Like, just go out and have fun. Like, just because, you know, we start talking and we've been talking for two weeks and you make that date mean so much. And then if it's like, you go out, you had a good time and maybe you don't hear from him again. It's not personal. It just means that at the end of the day, you're probably not going to like everyone that you go out with. So why should everybody like you? It's all the moons and stars have to be there. But if you just show up, like you're meeting a friend, you're having fun getting out, it's light, that's just better energy, you know, and that's conscious dating. So that's, you know, one of the things that I teach is conscious dating. And that's really showing up from a place of deep self-love. And when you show up from that place, you have a more empowering narrative. So take us through sometimes how the dating prospects can be for the women, especially women who are divorced, who may feel that they don't want to, or maybe they can't remarry because they've been there, done that. They may have children, but now after so many years, they're back on the dating market. How do you coach them? Oh, well, the first thing we need to do is Instead of just randomly going out there, let's like get crystal clear on what is it that you want now? Okay. Like, what do you want? Especially if you're, and it depends on the history. Like we need to heal our wounds. Have we healed the wounds from this past relationship? Can't have we consciously completed this last relationship because relationships end and we don't have to make them make it a bad thing. Marriages end. It doesn't mean that you're a failure. And a lot of people walk around with that because it's really like till death do us part is it's kind of like an old narrative. That's a long time to be with someone, especially when you start younger. I mean, let's face it, really more than 50% of marriages end up in divorce. And that's the true fact. And then people go on to remarry. And then people get divorced and somebody, sometimes people go on to marry after that, you know, but it's all about, and this is a whole nother conversation, but having just like a good divorce, meaning you two part ways, but the family stays intact, you know?